Hello, sociology students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 6, Section 4, Formal Organizations. So, find your notes, and we're going to wrap up this chapter. In Section 4, starting with Number 20, Formal Operate Organizations, um, basically are deliberately created to achieve one or more long-term goal. An example of this would be our bureaucracy uh, that is based on rationality and efficiency. So that could be, for example, our U.S. government. An informal organization emerges within formal organizations, and they're usually guided by norms and rituals and sentiments. They're not part of the formal organization. These, for the most part, uh, form spontaneously. So if you, if you look at the graphic below here, um, you know, if we're looking at a formal structure, that could be like a corporation where there are, uh, there might be a CEO or a president and you have different departments where they have vice presidents that are leading different groups of people. Whereas an informal organization might be a network of friends that has formed out of this formal organization at some point in time. Uh, advantages of a bureaucracy. Uh, they're based on rationality and efficiency. They are a division of labor, so that way we can get things done very rapidly. There is a hierarchy of authority uh, or uh, an opportunity for people to um, rise up and, and to, uh, for the most part, achieve some kind of status within the organization. There are rules, and aside from rules, there we go. There's procedures which stabilize the organization um, for the most part for conducting or coordinating activities and guiding the situation. There's usually written records of work and activities. And finally, promotion within bureaucracy is usually based on merit, meaning uh, that you have achieved it or earned it, or you have the right qualifications to have that position. Some disadvantages of bureaucracies. There are moments of inefficiency. And if you look at our federal government, that's pretty much the case. Um, sometimes the federal government can handle big tasks, but they tend to do that very slowly. And for the most part, that, that kind of makes people upset. There's also lots of rules and procedures and impersonal relationships. So if you had... Like, for example, um, in 2019, we had uh, a series of floods in the Midwest. And if you were a person who lost their home or lost some of your personal property as a result of flooding, you might have had to apply with FEMA, uh, which is kind of the Federal Emergency Management Administration or agency. And it might take months to get money and you might not necessarily get the full amount of money for your damages, uh, but you have to go through all these hurdles to get that taken care of. And finally, uh, informal groups usually rise within bureaucracies to meet needs that are usually ignored by the formal organization. Number 24, power refers to the ability to control the behavior of others. And authority is usually the exercise of legitimate power. There are those people out there that crave both. Uh, in an organization, to achieve its goals, power must be exercised. So in other words, there has to be someone who is going to take charge. And they have to have a certain amount of authority to uh, administer that power, or otherwise people are going to ignore them. There is this kind of thing called the iron law of uh, oligarchy, and it's kind of a governmental thing, but it states that power increasingly uh, tends to become more and more, oops, I'll try this again, more and more concentrated in the hands of fewer, there we go, members of an organization. All right. Thank you very much.